Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. I'm Harry Donahue, and today I'm at Lanark Country Club for the 18th annual Jim Maloney Coaches vs. Cancer Golf Classic. You know, every year, the six coaches in the City Six, that's the top Division I basketball coaches in the city, get together and hold a series of events. There's golf, there's the big breakfast after the selection Sunday for the NCAA basketball tournament, and there's an event down in Stone Harbor at the Jersey Shore every summer. And they raise and have raised millions of dollars over the past years. And this is just one event, and they have a beautiful day and more than 100 golfers here at Lanark. We'll be back to talk to the golfers, the coaches, and more on Inside Golf presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Visit their Ballot-Kinwood location. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Free enterprise is the engine that drives our economy. Everyday businesses, big and small, work to make life better for their customers and a better life for themselves. Susquehanna knows successful businesses need a strong financial partner, someone who can help keep your business running at peak efficiency. The people of Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for businesses like yours. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. A beautiful day here at Lanark Country Club for the 18th annual Jim Maloney Coaches vs. Cancer Golf Classic. And Nicole Christ is from the American Cancer Society and had a lot to do with putting this event all together. Joining me is Nicole Chris. Nicole was with the American Cancer Society, but more importantly, she deals with a lot of events involving coaches versus cancer. And Nicole, this is the 18th annual Jim Maloney Classic. That's a long shelf life for an event like this, isn't it? It is. It's been um, a successful event here in the Philadelphia area, thanks to the six Philadelphia school coaches um, for 18 years. Now, you mentioned the six area coaches. Of course, uh, the tenure goes to Phil Martelli and Fran Dunphy, and they are known around the country, them and their four other coaches now, with raising a lot of money. In fact, you were telling me they're kind of a role model for other coaches and groups and areas in the country. It's true. Coaches versus Cancer is a nationwide uh, prog program throughout the whole nation for the American Cancer Society and Fran Dunphy and Phil Martelli have spearheaded how that looks and have perfected it here in Philadelphia and are, are a model along the, uh, around the country. Now I know that this is just one of many events that mm -hmm. you've had. Uh, one of the bigger events I've participated in the day after Selection Sunday at the Palestra, there's a breakfast, and it seems each year more and more people show up. It's true. It's an exciting, exciting day. It's set right after Selection Sunday. It's that Monday morning. All of the coaches, panelists, yourself, come out, and they give their analysis of what the year will look like. And <laughs> it's an exciting day, and, and we fill that floor of the Palestra. It's great. By the way, I'm always right. I always <laughs> pick I always, always pick the four teams and the national champion. <laughs> Don't I wish that was true? <laughs> we'll talk to Joe Lenardi maybe about bracketology <laughs> because I know yeah. Joe is here as well. Mm -hmm. Another event you have down at the uh, South Jersey Shore yeah. at the Stone Harbor Golf Club every year, right? And that's a great night. Just uh, It's our beach ball, and it's where people come down and just celebrate some time together. All the coaches come, their wives, and it's a great time at the Stone Harbor Country Club. Well, weather was certainly on your side today. It's a beautiful day. How many golfers do we have out here? We have 118 golfers out today, and it's couldn't be a better day. It's I know. And how much money overall will you raise, not just from this event, but from the other events that we talked about on an annual basis? On an annual basis, we've collectively raised well over a million dollars and we raise hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars every year, thanks to the coaches and this, these programs. And thanks to uh, Nicole, Chris, for everything you do you. for uh, cancer and fighting cancer and preventing cancer among us. And that's what we're doing here. We're here to, to find a cure and we're raising funds to eradicate cancer. We support programs and services all over the Philadelphia area and um, that's why we're here fighting this. 
So thank you. And having some fun at the very same mm -hmm. time. In this beautiful weather at the Lanark Country Club, it's perfect. He, he wants you to talk during the body switch. <laughs> you know, you never know who you're going to run into here at the Jim Maloney Golf Classic for Coaches versus Cancer. Look who I found. <laughs> Neil Hartman from Comcast Sportsnet. I'm not going to ask you. I bet you're having a better time than Chip Kelly, right? Uh, I'm playing pretty well today, actually. Hit the ball well. I haven't played all that much this year, but look at this day. Look at this day. It's perfect. Now, Beautiful. when he says he hasn't played much this year, that means what? Down to three or four times no, a I week? Only, I've played six <laughs> times all year. This is my sixth round. Really? So, yeah, back in the day, prior to kids, I have a 12-year-old and a 13-year-old. I played probably about 75 times in the summer. Now, but, now, but now, not that much. So instead of hitting it 280, 275, 270? Um, that's a little low, Harry. We want to go around the three bills. Do you? Sure. Do you mind if we watch it? Now, this is a drivable hole. It is. Jay Siegel actually had a hole-in-one on this hole, very famous here at Lanark, and there's a plaque just behind us that uh, signifies that momentous occasion. Well, let's see if you can equal uh, and get a one. Wouldn't that be something in front of our cameras, huh? Oh, look, and, and my partner, Ray Lyons, hands me my club. And wow. Was, they take care of you, don't they? Absolutely. Here we go. All right. Neil Hartman on the tee for everybody. It's one of the shorter holes, but also one of the smallest greens, right? So give it a try. Oh boy, that's got a shot. Cascading draw. What do you think? You like it? Was that the right angle? I honestly missed it by just a tad, but it will play. Okay. Well, you didn't get one, but you got a chance maybe at two. <laughs> As I mentioned at the beginning of the show, Inside Golf has covered uh, several of these Jim Maloney Golf Classics, Coaches versus Cancer. We're back, and back with us is John Smith. We run into this guy all the time. John, how you doing? Doing terrific, Harry. How are you doing? Now, for those of you who don't know anything about college basketball, John Smith is an icon in the annals of St. Joe's Hawks basketball. He hit the winning shot, a layup, to beat DePaul, the number one ranked team in the country, Mark Aguirre, way back when, 1981, at the Dayton Arena. That's correct. That's How's my basketball knowledge? Your basketball knowledge is incredible. That's why I enjoy every year sitting here before you on the microphone. It's wonderful. Yeah. You know, my ego gets any bigger here. It's terrific. It's a, always a pleasure to be out here every year with you and everyone from uh, Philadelphia and the Big Five and Philly Six, if you will, and uh, just a great cause. Always always a wonderful event to be at and uh, thrilled to be here. But now that you brought up uh, 1981, I, I was telling Coach Giannini at our golf outing last week I said you know you had your your uh, your young guy make that basket last uh, last summer and they called it the uh, last season the March Madness and he called it the uh, Southwest Philly floater well not to be outdone by the John Smith fourth and chunk layup which is what mine was called back in the day absolutely and boy we still remember how's your golf game John? my golf game is still as bad as it was the last 15 years here so it's uh, but it's improving there's a lot of people out there saying, right on, Smitty, right on. <laughs> <laughs> For a great cause. Happy to be here. Wonderful. John, always a pleasure. Thank you, Harry. Good to be with and you. And you can still make that layup today, <laughs> I bet. I can. And Lonnie McFarland can still pass the ball. <laughs> yeah. Now, I've had the pleasure on several occasions to play with Jim Lynham. This is Jim's daughter, of course, Dee Lynham. And I can tell you, from what we've seen, I'm Your having, father could take some lessons from you. <laughs> I'm having a good day, Harry. It's not really always that good, as you well know, with this game. But, yes, I do love to play. Well, uh, before our cameraman got here, I saw you uh, almost hole out a second shot on 18 mm -hmm. and just missed the birdie putt, and you made four. And here you almost hold out, what was that, your third shot on the par five? It was. It was my third So you did get the birdie. I did. Uh, and usually when the camera's rolling, you know, that's when you hit your terrible shots so I got lucky twice with you guys because I hit a good one out there and then that one that was an excellent shot D uh, this is a great event and I know you've supported it in the past what's it mean for you to come out here not just have fun but also do something for a cause like coaches versus cancer well the, the coaches in this city are so committed to uh, this charity and they've done such a great job over the years staying committed to it um, and you know I have deep affection for all six of them so uh, it means a lot to me um, you know I, I think all of us know somebody who's been touched by cancer and many you know we've lost people through the years so I'll always support it and as Phil Martelli always says you know the day we pick up a newspaper and it you know says cancer is dead then we've done our job right you know uh, John Smith is here and yeah. I had to always remind our audience what John means it's been a long time but you remember it because you're also part of the story 
with your dad when John made the layup to beat DePaul, and I guess people constantly all over the country remind you of that. Absolutely. Actually, John yelled my name out on one of the first couple holes I was playing, and his voice is one of those that I always know who's calling my name, and I don't see him that often. And I had to tell the two guys in my group who are much younger than me, I said, that's the guy who scored the layup that beat the Paul. I said, but that mattered. Do you know who that? Yeah. Oh, John Smith. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I like that his name still rings a bell for people in basketball uh, history in this city. But yeah, that was a great time. It was a long time ago. And uh, I feel fortunate to have been a part of that, but I've had so many other great things since then. Definitely part of the story. We'll let you go. Now, do you want us to follow you? Because know, who knows? You're my good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, uh, this is working out well for me. I'm sure you have better things to do, though. Thanks a lot, Dee. <laughs> Thank you. At this moment, across the country, families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, They'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Welcome back to Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management from Lanark Country Club, the 18th annual Jim Maloney Coaches versus Cancer Golf Classic. And it wouldn't be a Coaches versus Cancer Golf event without the coaches in the Philadelphia area. Somebody who needs no introduction as a player or a coach, Drexel's bruiser Flint Brew. Uh, that was a nice little putt you sank. There. Oh, not bad. Everybody gets lucky once in a while. You know how that goes. You know, you're you're so calm out here on the golf course. <laughs> you know, people, you probably need a few zebras out here to I'm get calm, you riled I'm up. I'm calm everywhere, but when we practice and when we play. Other than that, I'm pretty calm. I'm so this pretty, is a you calming know. infinence for you well, out everybody here. Everybody thinks I'm going to throw clubs and do all those things like that, but you know, I'm not that good, so I don't worry about it. Uh, but uh, no, I don't. I don't get. I don't get all riled up when I'm out. You know, everybody's having a, a great time. The weather's perfect. The golf course is perfect. It's a great cause, isn't it? Unbelievable. Uh, you know, everybody's always touched by cancer in some way. Uh, the advances over the last few years. You know, since I've been involved with this, I've actually followed uh, the things that they talked about in terms of the advances and trying to get a cure. So uh, you know, it's always great for us to come out and be a part of this and. Hopefully one day, like Phil always talks about, have a big party saying that cancer is cured. I got to ask you a basketball question. How are the Dragons going to be? Uh, we'll be okay, I guess. I guess I can't be hollering, screaming at them too much. I got to lay off of that a little bit. You won't be the same. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I like what we did this summer in terms of our preparing. And, uh, uh, you know, I like some of our young guys uh, who had to play for us a little bit this year. And if we can stay healthy and we be a little lucky, then, uh, then I think we got a chance to be okay. Getting to the tournament's better than making that six-foot putt, isn't it? Oh, no question about that. <laughs> Brew, always a pleasure. Good to see you. All right, you. thank you. All right, all right. Well, these two gentlemen are fixtures when it comes to coaches versus cancer, not only in Philadelphia but around the country. Fran Dunphy of Temple and Phil Martelli from St. Joseph's. Uh, you like that term, fixture? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like the fact that we're involved with a, a great organization. I think we've uh, we've done our part to try to make coaches versus cancer as good as we possibly could, certainly in the Philadelphia area. And I think that we are as uh, well thought of around the country because of uh, the things that have happened in coaches versus cancer in Philly. The corporate community got behind us. Many of the schools have done a great job with us and uh, great support for the the younger people as well, the grade schools and the middle schools and the high schools are all jumping on board with the school initiative that we now have. So we're real proud of that. Phil, uh, a couple times today, people have referenced your story and you tell it a lot about the headline you eventually want to see in the newspaper. Yeah, I, I think that um, we haven't done enough until we can open up our paper or see it on our television, scroll it, that it say cancer free. Uh, and I want to thank, and being Philadelphia, and I want to say to the doctors, let's go faster, faster, faster. Why not tomorrow? Um, and if it's not in our lifetime, then it, it's, it has to be in our children's lifetime because no one deserves this disease. Talking uh, not only the golf tournament, how about a little basketball? You're in a new conference. What's that mean for Temple and Fran Dunphy? Well, specifically for this year, we have some, uh, some home games that are going to be spectacular, uh, in addition to St. Joe's and Villanova at home as well. But... Louisville and Connecticut and Memphis and Cincinnati and others and uh, 
some really high powered teams that I think are going to challenge us like you can't believe. So we, we're in we're in for a, a tough, tough year that way in terms of the, the teams that we're going to play, but really excited by the opportunities that we have. I know the preseason polls aren't out. Where do you expect St. Joe's to be when they do come out in the Atlantic 10, Phil? Well, we'll be in the middle of the pack. Uh, obviously, we have VCU, which is a Final Four contender, and St. Louis. LaSalle has a wonderful crew coming back. UMass is underrated, I believe. And then we'll be in that next bunch with Dayton and Richmond and St. Joseph's. And uh, we have a, a lot of work to do within our league and then the non-conference portion of the schedule, which hopefully will prepare us for a tough league slate. You know, you guys aren't playing today. You're driving around and meeting up with everybody who is playing. But you probably are costing somebody a shot at this because I know, Dump, you're about a five, maybe a four. And Phil, you're, well, I won't say you're handicapped, but you're competitive. No, I'm healthy 30. I'm, and I'm trending, so that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> guys, thanks a lot. We'll, we'll always uh, enjoy an outing with you guys and uh, look forward to it again next year. Right, well, thanks Thank for you. thinking about us. Well, here's Joe Lenardi, always a fixture at the Coaches versus Glancer Jim Maloney Classic. He's a member here at Lanark. Joe, and I, we're standing on the 12th tee. I can see the plaque now. And what he's referring to, Joe Lenardi this summer had an ace, a hole in one. Tell us about that. Well, I think it proves that uh, golf is the ultimate game of hope. <laughs> and look, when the 12th seed in the D flight can hit a thin hybrid and have it land in the exact spot of the green where it needs to to roll in the hole, uh, that's a blind squirrel story, absolutely. Now, was that your first? Oh, no question. First one that didn't happen on the boardwalk. Yeah. Right, I got you, yeah. <laughs> where you win a free game or, and exactly. come back if you make it on 18. Who was in your group that day? was uh, Marty Farrell from St. Joe's, his yeah. brother-in-law, and some guy named Martelli I was walking with. And uh, uh, let's just say we celebrated appropriately. Joe, if they had bracketology for the NFL, would the uh, Eagles make the field of 64? I think they'd be in the play-in game. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind. Yeah, exactly. Last four in, first four out. That's where the birds are, kind of like my golf game. I understand. We're going to watch you if you don't mind. Absolutely. Now, you're going to have that hybrid again? It looks like it's pretty far back today, but the tee is up. We'll have to shoot it. Billy will give us uh, a good tip. But, you know, uh, 68 is a pretty good score in bracketology. It's even better at golf. Uh -huh. But I'll have to stop after this hole. I was going to say, how many holes do you want to play today? <laughs> yeah, not that many. Well, let's see if history can repeat itself. 150 yards, Joe? All right, let's see if he's got that 150 club in his hand. It's got to turn a little bit. Well, history will not repeat itself here at Lanark, but that won't stop Joe Lenardi, right? You're going to come back for more. That's right, we still got, what, six holes to go? <laughs> There's a big trophy on the line here. <laughs> okay, Joe, right. thanks for joining us. Now, the golfers had a chance to win a variety of basketball-related items, including tickets to several City Series games. Not bad. Fran Dunphy was uh, one of the coaches. It signed, well, a Temple basketball. What else? And it says, Fran Dunphy, go Owls. Jay Wright also, he delivered a signed basketball. I don't see any Armani shoes here, but there is a nice Villanova golf shirt. Moving right along, how about Phil Martelli? Phil gave us one of the more uh, trendy scarves. Boy, that looks nice for a cold night at the St. Joe's Fieldhouse. And Bruiser Flint, a Drexel basketball signed by the coach. Jerome Allen came through. This will keep you warm on your way to the Palestra for a pen game. And how about this? This may be my favorite. Do you believe these shoes? Yes, John Giannini's LaSalle Explorers. Boy, I'd want to go back and play college basketball if I could wear these. I wonder if I can get them in a golf shoe. They're special. Stay with us. Inside Golf continues with our teed off panel. Easily. I mean, think about how many wins he would have on tour, guys, if he played a normal sketch, somewhat of a normal sketch. Defining a target, realizing a dream. Susquehanna Bank can help you get your plans off the ground. Whether you're sending kids to college or doing something special for yourself. Susquehanna's financial advisors are worth talking to. We can help you find the smartest way to borrow money and save money in the process. 
Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts for dreamers like you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. When you step out, make sure you go all in. Because at Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action. And we'll bring it all to the table. So take us for a spin. And go all in for the win. Valley Forge Casino Resort. It's safe, it's chic, and only a shuffle away from the main line. Guests of Teed Off receive gift certificates to any of the eight restaurants at Valley Forge Casino at King of Prussia. The major victories are, it's a competition between him and Nicholas. There's nobody else involved. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues with our Teed Off segment. And today we're back at the Valley Forge Casino Resort and specifically Viviano's Italian Ristorante under Chef Tony Clark. And our panel today includes Joe Logan of MyPhillyGolf.com. Looking for a great golf blog for stories nationally and local? This is the guy, Joe Logan. Also looking for a great sports talk middays, like 10 to 12 weekdays? Well, Harry Mays is the answer. Harry holds down the fort on the Fanatic 97.5 in Philadelphia. And if you're just looking for a good time or a good lesson, a few great golf stories, Bob Shepard is your guy. Bob's up at Five Ponds at Warminster. You can catch him there, or you can read his book. Everybody's read, I think, from judging from the reaction I get, Bob. If they hadn't invented the game, what would we have done with all the whiskey? And um, Harry and Joe have a, what is your uh, answer to that? If I had vodka now, I wouldn't be here. There you go. <laughs> we have plenty of vodka. This segment's going to be over before you know. Uh, Tiger Woods is on the verge, we think, uh, health-wise, if it holds up of getting closer and closer to the record of Sam Snead, Bob, 82 tour victories. And we all know he's stuck on a hold there when it comes to majors at 14 with a chance to uh, get the 18 in Nicholas's record. What's better, 82 or 83 tour victories or 19 majors? Well, I might be a little bit off base here, but I really think the amount of tournaments you win in a career has the most power to it. Obviously, they're pushing the the uh, the major part of his career, but in essence, the major victories are, are it's a competition between him and Nicholas. There's nobody else involved. His winning of these other tournaments is among the best golfers in the field for a period of 15 or 20 years. I mean, it's much more outstanding to have a, a, a multiple like this year alone. I mean, he's won five times and. Everybody says, well, there are no majors, but who else has won five times? I mean, the, the second place is like twice, I think. Adam Scott, I think. I might be wrong on that, but. Well, there's, a, uh, there's, there's multiple a couple guys. guys. Mickelson's won a couple. Mickelson, that's right. Yeah, yeah you're right. Twice, yeah. 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 And, but I guess, you know, Harry, Tiger himself, basic, I mean, I think he could have had 85 wins by now if he hadn't cut his schedule down to just gearing up for major competitions. Easily. I mean, think about how many wins he would have on tour, guys, if he played a normal sketch, somewhat of a normal schedule, which he, we all know he does not. But I think it's the majors. I really do. You think about what Jack has done with 18 and then finishing second, I believe, 19 times in his career. Uh, Tiger is not only looking for 18, he's looking for 20. I was reading this, that Sports Illustrated a year or so ago where his real goal is 20 majors. Now, you know, maybe we'll start believing that if he wins one more, his next one, but uh, I think well, it would it's be been five years, yeah. right? And uh, counting, Joe, what uh, your thoughts on I, this? I was surprised to hear Bob say what he said because I thought I was going to be the only one who felt that total victories is a truer indication or indicator of, of your career, the longevity. I mean, uh, uh, Sam Snead won 82 events over 30 years. Tiger's already got 79 over 18 years. Right. Uh, Nicholas had uh, and he's uh, beginning to cut back on his right. schedule I mean right. th that is phenomenal to win as many tournaments as he has in 18 years uh, you know the, the to me the number of majors is uh, it's a lot of flash I mean they're great they're great and if you look at the masters the amount of people that don't get invited to the U US Open the qualifiers the PGA eliminates all the amateurs so the majors have their glory, but at the same time, the, the, the tournaments themselves, they have a full throttle field. 
playing their best. And what's most amazing about Tiger is his winning percentage. Yes. He's won all these many tournaments, and as you said, he plays a reduced schedule, mm -hmm. uh, and so his winning percentage is is unlike anybody's, including Nicholas. Yes. Hey, like he wins like once every uh, like eight it's times. Like twenty five percent of the yeah, one, like yeah, that. It's ridiculous. Uh, that, that's pretty ridiculous. But what about? You know, he's getting older, and, and we've seen he's had his aches and pains and, and share of injuries most recently. Is, is that going to be more of a factor than, say, who's coming up, you know, in terms of talent to, to hold him off from getting these I think both. Records? I think absolutely he's at the point, you know, uh, the, the people used to watch him and go, that swing cannot possibly hold up as Nelson hard as he swings that. at the ball. It can't hold up. Well, it, it hasn't. It hasn't. Yep, yep. And uh, it's that's where it is. you, though, Harry. Oh, yeah, yeah right. My I mean, your speed club head speed is faster now than it's ever. It's like it's a windmill in a hurricane, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about 85 <laughs> miles an hour. You know? <laughs> he still has that. And this is a line that uh, I heard uh, Chris Wheeler use uh, regarding a, an old Phillies pitcher, Chris Short. Uh, when he was up there, he was a terrible hitter, even for a pitcher. And Chris said he used to swing like somebody just threw a snake at him. <laughs> Think about that. Now, I don't, I'm not accusing you of being in that uh, specific imagery. It does but look like a pickpocket, though, doesn't it? <laughs> we're snaps it back there. <laughs> we're we're going to end it on that. Well, I don't know. You can go to Plymouth Country Club if you want and see uh, right. Harry Mays up close and personal with that swing. For Bob Shepard, Harry oh. Mays, and Joe Logan, Harry Donahue, I'll be right back. More with Inside Golf in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. At this moment, across the country, Families are packing their bags for a getaway. And no matter where they end up, they'll all be home by dinner. Plan your own at PlayGolfAmerica.com. From finding fun and affordable programs to finding advice from PGA and LPGA professionals, PlayGolfAmerica.com has a way for you to get away. Visit today for details. PlayGolfAmerica.com, your link to the game. Honey, what are all these cash rewards? Stellar checking with Smart Rewards. We earn cash on check card purchases and when we transfer money from our Stellar checking into our savings account. Cool. How should we spend them? Mm. Stellar. Stellar. Stellar! Probably groceries. <sighs> Stellar checking from Susquehanna Bank. Earn cash rewards whether you're spending or saving. Member FDIC. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf from Lanark Country Club. We want to thank Coaches Versus Cancer, the American Cancer Society, the coaches and all their friends and participants in this 18th annual Jim Maloney Golf Classic. I'm Harry Donahue. We'll see you next week. And remember, no matter how bad it's going for you, don't pick up. Thanks for joining us on Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank and Wealth Management. Inside Golf, presented by Susquehanna Bank. Susquehanna Bank, doing what counts. By Club Champion, better fit, lower scores. Visit their Ballot Kinwood location. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.